Hi there, so um, we're back looking at Gotta Get Through This, and in this video we're going to take a look at the drums and get those all sorted out. Um, so uh, yeah, there's there's quite a lot to, to look at and to keep in mind with the drums, so this might be a quite a long video, or I might split it up. Uh, we'll see how we go. So uh, just to begin with then, got an empty instrument track, and let's put a drum synth in there, so using the Ultra Beat drum synth. And um, we'll look at the sounds that we're using as part of this video, but for now, just going to choose something nice and basic. So from the drum kits down at the bottom, I'm going to go for the Vintage 09 kit, uh, which sounds like this. So we're going to do some work on the sounds, but these will do to get us going. So now that I've got that drum kit in, I'll make two copies of that. Um, or two duplicates rather, so a new track with a duplicate setting or I'm going to use the shortcut which is Command and D. So a couple more of those. Uh, now if I just hit play with those drum machines in, we get all of that, uh, which isn't really what we want. So um, depending on which preset you use, make sure that this button here, this sequence of power button is switched off, uh, otherwise that can really mess you up. Um, yeah. So we don't want any preset patterns coming in because we're going to be programming our own drums, obviously. Right, so now that I've got my three tracks in, I'm just going to name them. Kick, uh, snare will go there, and hi-hats. Uh, okay. So... With regard to the note input, obviously we had a look at that at the end of the last video uh, in terms of copying the bass notes down to the kick drum and editing that. Um, so we've already got our kick drum there and I've got all this stuff hidden away. Let's find the kick drum. So we're just, at the moment, we're just concentrating on these four bars just where the drums first come in. This is the kick drum we've got from copying down the bass notes. Looking at the, the the next part, the snare part, this is really, really simple as well because the snare is just playing on beats two and four. Um, so using my caps lock keyboard, I find the snare sound. Snares are on the D and E notes in the first octave. So one, two, three, four. That's all I'm going to do for the snare drum. It is okay, those two notes on two and four. Let's quantize those two quarter notes. And I'm just going to copy that by holding down Alt, so to bar six, and then select both of those to bar seven. That's filled up my four bars. Uh, so I'm going to select all of those regions and then merge them together up here. So next, let's have a look at the hi-hats then. There's a couple of different things going on in the hi-hats. Um, so it's the most complicated of the drum parts. Um, but we'll start with the simple bit, which is just playing eighth notes. So again, using my caps lock keyboard. There's my hi-hat sounds. Just going to play one bar of eighth notes. Fantastic timing. I'm sure you'll agree. So let's, um, so you notice I just trimmed up that region there so that it starts at the beginning of bar five where I want it to start. Uh, right, let's quantize those notes then to eighth notes. Um, now, because I used the caps lock keyboard, all of the velocities are the same. Um, if you're using a MIDI keyboard, I expect all of your velocities are going to be different. So I'm going to show you a trick to, to get them all the same um, as part of the editing on these eighth notes of hi-hats. Uh, over here, if you remember the region parameters box, which we looked at in the last video, looking at this dynamics section, this is where you can uh, exercise some control over the velocities in the region. So with this region selected, I'm going to go up here and fix the dynamics. That will make them all the same. Um, or at least it'll make them sound all the same. If you look at your notes, 
they're probably all still different colors or different velocities. So what we're going to do is take this setting and apply it onto the notes like this. Uh, select the region up to MIDI, region parameters, and then normalize region parameters. So if you do that, you'll see this goes back to normal, doesn't say fixed anymore, and all of your notes should now be the same velocity. Now that we've got that, we're going to select every other note using shift, holding down shift while I click, and then using the velocity tool, uh, pressing escape brings up this toolbox. Choose the velocity tool, and I'm going to increase those just to give them an accent. You'll notice right now that you can't hear any difference with those velocities, don't worry about that. We'll deal with that when we look at the sounds uh, in just a moment. So now I've got my one bar of eighth note hi hats. I'm going to do the same as I did with the snare. So copy that to bar six, select them both, to bar seven, and merge. So I've got a nice, uh, you know, tidy four bar drum section. Way too loud, so let's bring those hi hats down. Okay, now I mentioned there was a secondary hi-hat pattern um, alongside the eighth notes that we've just looked at. So let's take a look at this one. This is really the, the sort of fiddly bit as far as the drums are concerned. Um, so this is what the pattern looks like on the piano roll editor. It's a two bar pattern, um, which starts at bar five. And this is what it looks like as notation. Um, so you see closed hi-hat sound and an open hi-hat sound there and there. So this is going to uh, end up being on a different sound to the eighth note hi-hats that we've already got. Um, and with this part, it's really important that you get the quantize swing right. Um, swing is quite a big feature. Swing rhythms, big feature of this style of music, this sort of UK garage type uh, style. So with, uh, let's just look at a few different quantizers then. If we just go for a straight 16th note quantize, let's just loop a bar of that. Yeah, it's very sort of robotic and mechanical, which works for some styles, but for this, we need to explore some of these swing settings. So. With A, that is the smallest amount of swing. And if you take it up to F, that's a ridiculous amount of swing. So I ended up uh, with D swing, so fairly heavy. And let's bring that in with the kick and snare on the other hat. Okay, so as I mentioned, this secondary part is a two bar pattern. So let's copy that to fill up this little four bar chunk. And again, why not just merge it? Um, and so that is kind of it for note input for this, uh, for this section. Also, it's worth saying that this really is the, the foundation of all the drums all the way through the, the track. Um, so once you've got these four bars programmed up, um, that's a massive chunk of your work for the drums done. So now that we've got the main um, drum patterns inputted, um, let's just spend a bit of time looking at the sounds that, we, that we're using because it's important, I think, for you to get the drum sounds right earlier on because they're such an important part of the, the texture. Of this of this track. So if we start by looking at the kick drum, uh, what I'm not going to do is just go through every setting that I've used because that would be really tedious and uh, quite lazy. So what we'll do is look at the ultra beats and uh, I'll just explain some of the some of the most important um, settings to to experiment with and some of the things to keep in mind when you're when you're thinking about your drum sounds. So I've worked on this one already. Um, now, hopefully you can hear that it's a little bit distorted, 
Okay, so your distortion section is just here. All right. Um, you've got two different types of distortion. So experiment with these settings here. You've got a gain control, uh, a tone control, and a level control. Experiment with those. Um, also, oh, it's worth pointing out with the Ultra Beat drum machine, you've got all your different drum sounds up here. And each one of these, as you select it, you'll notice has entirely different settings. So all of the settings here are independent and separate for every different drum sound. So yeah, looking at some of the, the important uh, things to experiment with then. So your distortion setting is here. Pitch is down here next to this dial. You can control the pitch. Down here in this bottom corner, this is where you can control the length of the drum sound with this envelope, specifically envelope number four. So make sure this is lit up. So you can control how kind of short and staccato the sound is. And also it's, it's shaped with some of these others. Ended up with something sort of quite punchy and staccato. Distortion, let's say. Um, other things, other areas to keep in mind with these drum sounds. You've got two EQ bands here where you can shape the tone of the sound. Um, so with this kick drum, I've taken out this low end boost. Well, I've kept this high one up just to keep it, uh, try and get it poking through the mix. Uh, filter section is here, cutoff and resonance. What else? Uh, envelope pitch, distortion, filter, EQ. That's probably pretty much it. Oh, um, uh, importantly, velocity control. Remember those hi hats that we looked at, those eighth notes? Let's come back and have another look at those. So they're playing back on this sound. And we want to get some velocity uh, response into there. So we do that over here. Where it says via, I'm going to select velocity and then I can adjust the range or how sensitive it is by using these two controls on this dial. So hopefully you can hear some variation now in the velocity. Let's bring that right down. Okay, so those are some of the main things to keep in mind. And again, as I've said in an earlier video, it's all about listening. So when you're listening to the drum sounds on the original, you know, do think, well, how high or low pitched are they? Uh, how long are those drum sounds or how short? Uh, are they distorted and crunchy? Um, are they, you know, very bright or very warm with the filter? Um, you know, are there, think about EQ, are there any areas of the, any particular frequencies that kind of jump out more than others? So there's a bunch of things to think about and listen um to you know as as you're analyzing the original track when you're experimenting and making adjustments to the sounds that you're using um that should always be something you do in your own time okay because remember that you know that you're up against the clock with your your coursework and you don't want to be wasting time um experimenting and messing around too much with sounds when you can do as much of you as much as you want of that in your own time so um when you're listening to the original sounds and you're experimenting, you know, just have a, a scribble down some notes as you go, make a note of the settings that you end up using, and then you can recreate those settings quickly and without any fuss next time that you're in a co coursework session um, and you're up against the clock. Um, right, we're going to look at a couple of other ways then, uh, a couple of other things to think about to do with these sounds. So. We've kind of started with a kick drum sound. Let's look at the snare. So remember this was just on two and four. Now first thing to think about with the um, with the this drum machine is it's not all about just drum kits. So as well as the, the drum kits here in Logic 9 and 10, we've got drum banks. So I'm gonna go and choose this acoustic snare bank. And this gives me a whole load of different choices where snare drums are concerned.
So what I've ended up doing with uh, with my snare part, there, is copying those notes up again, so that I've got two different snare sounds playing at once. And that can be a good way of getting, you know, thickening up, getting a nice, distinctive, thick uh, snare sound. Okay, I think I might have messed around with the pitch on one of them to try and get it closer to what I thought the original song sounded like. So remember all these things that, you know, we just looked at, all these different controls. Don't be scared to move things around. Um, an experiment. Now you'll notice with the snare drum that there are a few different effects on the channel here so we'll quickly look at those. The most important ones are the phaser and the chorus. Um, but again this is just how I heard the snare drum on the original. Having the phaser and chorus, you get a kind of a stereo effect and a bit of movement in that snare sound, which is what, uh, which is how it sounded to me listening to the original uh, record. Uh, EQ-wise, I've got a little bit of a boost in these upper mid frequencies, uh, just to make the snare nice and kind of snappy. And then I've taken out all of these lower frequencies so that we don't get in the way of the bass and the kick drum. Okay, something else we can look at. Here is how Ultrabeat uses samples. Um, now with these hi-hats, what we want is, is a kind of quite a different sound for this secondary hi-hat part to the sound that we've got for the eighth notes hi-hats. So what I'm going to do is to select all of these notes and I'm going to put them up here on a higher octave because some of these drum kits, including this Vintage 09 kit, have got two sets of hi-hats in two octaves. So I'm moving them up so they start on F-sharp 2 instead of F-sharp 1. And if I open up the drum machine, you can see them playing up here. Um, now these are samples, these are recordings being played back, that's the waveform. Um, what you can do, is you're not limited to the, you know, to the particular sounds of any one drum kit, you can swap sounds out. So with this hi-hat selected, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to load in a different sample. This is one that I chose earlier on after kind of going through and auditioning some. Um, so I'm going to go and open that one. And the open hi-hat. Okay, again that's one that I uh, auditioned and chose earlier on. So a completely different hi-hat sound to the one that we've got down here. So we get that sort of contrast. So when you click load sample what you will get is the whole of the Ultra Beat library uh, in, in kits. So it's worth just spending, you know, not a you know, not hours and hours and hours, but a little bit of time just trying out auditioning different drum sounds and trying to put together a kit um, that matches as closely as you can what you hear on the record. So here are my two hi hat parts together. Then I'm going to edit this closed hi hat a bit. bring in the other drum sounds. Okay, uh, so this is what I've ended up with. Uh, I swapped out this other lower hi-hat as well. Um, so um, we've looked at the note input, we've looked at some features of the Ultra Beat 
to, to, to experiment with and, and things to keep in mind um, with the sounds that you're using. What we're going to look at next is copying. I think we'll split and do a separate video on um, copying and editing to fill out the texture of the whole of the track.